you. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to have a really fun species to talk about today. So we're going to come right over here. We're going to let our otters out. What we did today was set out a bunch of enrichment items for them to come out and explore. Oh, they're right over here. <laughs> and so there they are. Our two otters, our names are Hope and Dantu. Hope is 17 years old and Dantu is 10 years old. Dantu is the one going through the barrel right now. He's a little bit darker than Hope is and he also has longer whiskers than Hope does. Um, these guys are very good at manipulating items and so as they're kind of discovering what is out here since we set out a bunch of stuff for them, um, you'll see that they'll start trying to manipulate things with their paws. Hope's going up into the pool. And so up here, what we did was set up uh, some an ice pot for her and a puzzle feeder. And so as she's swimming through the water, what you guys will notice um, are little bubbles coming off of her. These guys have really dense, thick fur, and uh, it traps air. And so they have an under fur, and the air is trapped underneath their fur. <laughs> and that helps them uh, stay warm when they're swimming in the water. And it also kind of helps them stay dry because they are mostly uh, land otters. And so they mostly just go into the water to forage for food and look for food. And so what do they eat, right? And so they eat mostly mollusks and crustaceans. They also eat some fish. And here at the zoo, we give them a combination of all those things plus some meat. So they are carnivores. These guys are in the family of mustelids and mustelids include ferrets, weasels, skunks, <laughs> um, and things like that. So these guys are very intelligent and also very weaselly. And so they are very good at figuring out their, um, their habitats and where they're at. And so these guys are the smallest otter species. There are 13 otter species. Uh, the largest will be giant otters, which you'll see when we open our Pantanal exhibit, uh, hopefully later this year. And then we also have North American river otters, which are in our children's zoo. And so they're a little bit larger than these guys. But these uh, small clawed otters, this is as big as they are going to get. And you can see Dante using his little, his little paws trying to get into the food. So what we set in there is some um, fish. And so he's just kind of like, what, what is this? So these guys are super fun to watch. Very curious little animals. <laughs> and so they're gonna use this whole exhibit to kind of explore everything that's around them. And so they are very social animals. They will live in groups up to uh, 20 individuals. And uh, and so a group of otters is actually called a romp. Bishop, hi Bishop, he wants to know where do they live in the wild? That's an excellent question. These guys are actually found in Southeast Asia. So they're found mostly in Malaysia and Thailand and um, areas in and around Borneo. And we actually have a conservationist out in the wild. Her name is Leona Y. Hi Leona. She is out there in the, in the field She's tracking these guys, collecting data, and she is um, helping the community and educating the community as to why this species is important to keep around and how we can coexist with them. Because in the wild, uh, these guys can be considered pests at times since they eat fish. Uh, sometimes what they tend to do is eat uh, fish when uh, fishermen are trying to catch their fish. And so, and so they don't really like that. And so they're trying to coexist. Hi, Emily. Emily wants to know how old they are. So Hope is 17 years old and Don too is 10 years old and their lifespan in a zoo setting is anywhere between their late teens, maybe their early 20s. <clears throat> so Hope is a little bit older um, and because of that we're constantly tracking um, her activity, her mobility, her appetite. We track everything and then our vets who are super dedicated and awesome. Always check in to see how Hope is doing about every two weeks to make sure that she's doing all the utterly things that she usually does and so that she stays healthy. So 
So it looks like, oh, it looks like they kind of got into their ice pop. So uh, what Dante is eating is shrimp. So Harper wants to know, what do they do all day? And where do they sleep? And so uh, Harper, you're actually seeing what they actually do all day when they're out here on exhibit. They kind of explore, they'll look for food, they'll forage and see if there's anything um, out here for them to eat. But also they're super playful. So sometimes they're in the pool and they start wrestling with each other. Dante really, really loves to juggle uh, pebbles. And he's an excellent, excellent juggler. And hopefully he'll do that a little bit later. And then when they sleep, these guys will usually sleep um, somewhere on the exhibit, a little bit hidden, tucked away in the back. But in the wild, these guys will actually uh, dig little nesting burrows, and uh, they're called colts. And so that's where they will sleep with their family. <coughs> and so these guys have about 12 vocalizations. And uh, they mean anything between uh, trying to find their family or, hey, look, I found some food, or they are alarm calls. Uh, Jackson wants to know, what are baby otters called? They're called pups, or sometimes you can call them cubs. And when a female otter has babies, she will have anywhere between one to six pups in a litter. And so these pups don't, they're born with their eyes closed, and they usually don't open their eyes for about a month. And then mom starts trying to teach them how to swim at about three months. Brooke wants to know, what do they feel like? Do they have fur? So these guys are actually um, pretty soft. We don't actually try and uh, touch them, like actively touch them. But what we do do is uh, do training with them. And so in that training, we do some tactile things so that they can voluntarily participate in any vet procedure that they need to do. Um, why will we? Will do or wild, I'm sorry if I'm misspelling your name, um, or mispronouncing your name. Uh, how do they use their tails? So their tails they kind of use as rudders when they're swimming around, so it kind of helps guide them. Uh, look at their little toe beans. <laughs> it kind of helps guide them as they're swimming around in the water. So what Donju is doing right now, he's drying off. So these guys, when they when they get, and when they're done being in the water, they will rub around on rocks or trees to try and dry off. Tyler wants to know how long can they stay underwater? That's an excellent, excellent question. These guys can hold their breath for anywhere between six to eight minutes. <clears throat> and so um, when they do go underwater, they have the ability to close off their nose and their ears so that they can dive underneath. And as you see with their little feet and their paws, what they tend to do is kind of feel around <laughs> and see if they can find little plants, little uh, crayfish, things like that, so that um, they can find them and they can eat those things. Kenzie wants to know, what are their predators? That's a great question. So aside from uh, humans, sometimes can be their predators, um, also, any kind of like caiman or some sort of larger fish, a carnivorous fish or carnivorous cats that may be found in that area. And so if these guys are kind of sleeping, laying around, and they are exposed, they can get, uh, they can get caught by a predator. Joseph wants to know how fast can they swim? And so these guys, <clears throat> I'm not... 100% sure, like miles per hour, but I would say maybe around 10 to 15, they can go pretty fast. If they are scared, they will they will book it and they will go real fast um, to get away from any predators that might be chasing them or, or to chase um, any prey that they might see. And so these guys, when they are threatened by anything, these guys will kind of unify as a group and as a family and will kind of go on, go toward that predator head on as a family. And you don't want to mess with a group of otters. How much food do they eat in a day? Uh, Angela asks. So these guys actually have a really fast metabolism and so they are fed about every two hours. And so they probably get anywhere between, well, they get 133 grams of meat 
um, per day. And then they also get an allotment of fish and they get insects. And so <laughs> Hope stole the herring. And so uh, then that's what Hope has. She has herring. And it's one of their favorite, favorite fish to eat. <clears throat> and so when they get it, they kind of like try and fight over it. Do otters make good pets? Otters make awful pets. <laughs> I would suggest um, dogs and cats, fish as pets. Like I said, these guys are really social and they like to be with their family counterparts. They have a highly specialized diet and, um, and because of that, they also have a very aromatic poop. It is not the greatest smelling and so, and these guys also musk everywhere. Dante hasn't done it yet, but he does a little like uh, dance a little sprite dance every time he uses the bathroom and what he's doing is spreading their uh, their scent around and so um so that kind of claims their territory so they're very musky they have scent glands at the base of their tails and so if you guys are just joining us we are looking at hope and dantu dantu is closest to us he's rubbing himself on the rocks and then hope is his uh, female companion and uh, Hope is 17 years old and Dantu is 10 years old. Dantu is a little bit larger than Hope. He weighs about 7 pounds and Hope weighs about 5 pounds. So that's about how much they weigh. And uh, Dantu has longer whiskers on his face and then Hope's uh, whiskers a little bit shorter. Bryce wants to know if they make for life. They absolutely do. So usually when these guys um, have a family, it's a dominant pair. So it's a male and a female uh, pair, and they're the only ones that breed. And then all of the uh, previous litters will take care of any new litters that happen to, that the mom happens to have. And so females tend to stop breeding at the age of 12, so hope 17. So these guys are just, they're just companions and Dantu is the most attentive, protective uh, male companion she could ever ask for. He does not like to be separated for, from hope for any given amount of time. Lions, tigers and bears, oh my. In 15 minutes, there's a meeting. Rachel wants to know if they drink water. They absolutely do. And so they usually just take in the water um, as they're swimming. So any water that they find when they're swimming, they'll drink that. And then they also get water from their food sources. <laughs> so Dante found a piece of herring that he's going to eat. So you guys can keep your questions coming. You guys are asking very awesome questions. We only have these two otters, these two Asian small clawed otters. Um, our children's zoo has uh, two North American river otters, and then hopefully later this year when we get our Pantanal exhibit up, we'll have two more giant otters. And so what we set out for them is some enrichment. So you saw Dantu kind of messing with that PVC um, filter, or the little, the little uh, puzzle feeder, sorry. And um, he just kind of stuck his little paws in there and got out the fish. We put out an ice pop, which I think is probably already melted. And so the ice pop had fish and shrimp in it as well. And then we also set up some uh, ginger for them, uh, some hanging ginger that they will use later to um, sleep on. So Dante tends to rip it off and then they kind of sleep on it and it's like a pillow and a blanket. these guys since they're super playful and they are actually very uh, intelligent we like to keep all of our animals mentally stimulated throughout the day so everyone um, in the zoo all of all of our all the zoo keepers here always set out enrichment for every animal um, daily so that uh, 
uh, these guys stay mentally stimulated. They will exhibit natural behaviors that they will do out in the wild. So like foraging, digging, um, scavenging. So anything that they would do in the wild, we try and encourage here through our enrichment that they, we give to them. Jenna wants to know, how do they communicate? So these guys have over 12 vocalizations um, and they sound like little squeaks. So they, they literally sound like little squeaky toys when they're communicating with one another, but they, um, and they're in different tones and they can get very loud and very sharp. Eli wants to know, how good is their hearing? So they can hear fairly well um, and they also sense vibrations. So their long whiskers when they're in the water helps them sense vibrations in the water so they can actually locate any prey items or food that they want to get to. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys um, earlier saw, we also have squirrels out here. I'm not sure where they went off to, but they also have things that they're exploring. There's two squirrels, their names are Chanel and Walker, elder and um, they are primo squirrels. They're also found in Southeast Asia. They're also found in Southeast Asia where these guys are found. Um, their scientific name, Calosiris provosti, actually translates to beautiful squirrels. And so one of my favorite things about these otters and working with these otters is how intelligent they are and how much they can pick up um, through training. They're so intelligent. I mean, aside from the fact that they're utterly adorable, um, <laughs> they're very, they're very smart. And these guys, when we're training to, for vet exams and they participate, they voluntarily like will offer their hip for an injection or they let us check their paws or um, they'll open their mouth so that we can check their teeth. They're so smart, they're, they're awesome. Julie wants to know how cold their water is. It's not very cold. Um, since these guys are found mostly in rivers and streams, creeks, mangroves, uh, things like that, the water is pretty neutral. It's not very cold at all. You guys keep your questions coming. I'm so thankful for your questions. Um, I want to say hi to Avery and Axel, who like all of the children and parents watching, enjoy watching these Facebook Live segments. Thank y'all so much for doing that. <laughs> right now, so the rock that they're on right now, that's where they tend to kind of dry off, and then that's where they'll typically sleep sometimes as well. So when you come to the zoo, you can look up at this rock. and. <laughs> You'll see them kind of rolling around, trying to dry out their fur, and um, and then they'll just take a little a little nap until they're hungry again in about two hours. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you guys want to continue to find out how you can support the zoo and the animals we have in our collection and any of our conservation partners abroad. Go to our website, houstonzoo.org, and you can click on the Emergency Zoo Fund, and you can find out how you can continue to support us. Um, and then tune in again next week, every Monday through Friday, we have Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. Thanks, guys. Everyone, stay safe.